Okay, Fukushima. <laughs> um, I um, went into my vault, pulled out some articles. Uh, given what we now know, which we discussed last week, the government released a report that was formally classified for official use only. Uh, that's uh, an extremely low level of classification. In fact, it, the, the base phone book is classified for official use only. Uh, you, <laughs> this is stuff you put in your desk. You don't even bother putting it into a safe. So you can imagine what they might have that's classified secret, top secret, or above top secret that they're not telling us. But the report that we discussed last week was prepared March 18th, 2011. That was one week after the event in Japan. So they obviously knew some of this information in less than a week in order to produce that report. And what it boils down to is 100% of spent fuel pool four was released to the atmosphere. 50% of three and a quarter of two. And some of the articles we'll be getting to will talk about how that if that spent fuel pool four goes, it's bad news. It's game over. Evacuate Japan, evacuate the West Coast of the United States. Um, and unfortunately, a event happened and uh, nobody's been evacuated. So uh, I'm not sure we can, at this point, do anything to mitigate the damage to people. And this also gets into why I uh, went in and pulled the other links on radiation poisoning and uh, the long-term effects of low-level radiation. If you're an adult, it's going to affect you a, a bit less. But for infants and children, it's worse because they are growing and their bodies need more raw materials. And these different radionuclides uh, end up going to different parts of the body. And once it's... Uh, incorporated into the muscle or incorporated into the bone, I'm not sure there's any way of really getting them out of there. If it's inhaled, I know of no way of getting inhaled particles out. And just as an aside, you might have seen the news yesterday where the 28-year-old grandson of Jimmy Carter died. His heart just stopped. And given the information yes. we know now, I would hope somebody would raise the question, is this radiation or is it something else? Because if they don't find any John, other are, cause. Yes. There are other athletes uh, that I've read about on the Internet who have been involved in some kind of a game or a tournament, and they have just died right then and there with no... Um, no indication that there was a health problem prior to the death. None. We're talking about like football games. We're talking about there's a wrestling match and a high school wrestler just died right there. So that just happened. So you're absolutely right. Also, there's anecdotal evidence that we've seen like people have thinner hair. People's hair are turning grayer. Um, people are nauseous. People have less energy to start. People are lethargic. And uh, I submit that many of those symptoms have to do with radiation poisoning. What do you think? It's uh, quite possible. And like you say, we, we do get news of athletes dying and they'll find a, a heart defect that they didn't know about before. But this is not what we're seeing. Uh, they're dying and no cause that they can see. Okay. This is Fukushima 101. 102 tomorrow and 103 tomorrow. Fukushima, Captain John Reagan, I'm Pin Finelli. This is USAPrepares.com. Please don't touch that guy. Ensure this. This is Fukushima 101 with Captain John Reagan. John, please continue. 
Well, I guess the good news for us here is that you know we're, we're dealing with low level radiation, which means that uh, you, you don't die very quickly. Um, I was looking at uh, you know the exposure levels that in, inside the reactors they've not <laughs> gone in yet, except with robots. Uh, for those, it's so radioactive. I'm not even sure if your lifespan would be measured in minutes. It might be measured in seconds. It is so radioactive inside there. But what I'm going to do today is uh, make it through the news that I picked up this past week. And I'll start with your radiation this week. Uh, that's number 35 in the series that uh, Bob Nichols has written. And uh, the, the number one city uh, for this period, Fresno, California, with over 2,300 counts per minute, which <laughs> is 460 times normal. That's... Uh, Beta and gamma radiation, it's outlandish. Uh, and you can just scroll down and see uh, <laughs> places all over the country with ratings of over 1,000 counts per minute. There's uh, reports of sites being shut down. He talks about what's going on in St. Louis, and uh, one of the facts that I picked up out of there that I wasn't aware of is just how hot uh, uranium burns, and that's nearly 11,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So once that trash fire <laughs> meets up with there, if the uranium is not already uh, doing things on its own, it, it uh, will quickly ramp up to something that um, we really don't want to see. And John, you're talking about a, uh, a hazardous waste dump that where radioactive waste from the Manhattan Project, World War II, the building of the atomic bombs, uh, the radioactive waste was dumped in a, uh, in a landfill right outside of St. Louis, Missouri. And right next to that is a trash dump and the two are about, and there's a fire in the trash dump, and it's about, last report, about a thousand feet from the radioactive waste dump, and they cannot put the fire out. And um, we'll say officials or government types or their consultants can't, can't agree on what to do. And so now we're looking at a, a fire that could be a radioactive fire right outside of St. Louis, Missouri. And right near the St. Louis airport. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, that's not a place you want to be downwind of. You don't. It's three hours from, from our farm. Fortunately for us, the wind blows the other direction. But there are people who are downwind. Unfortunate for them. And is this the only toxic waste problem that we have in the country? No, your government has spent lots of time burying things without your knowledge. And the and and who do you who do you go after? Whose doorbell do you ring? Well, most of the people who are involved in this are dead. Most of the people who buried this waste are dead. The politicians are just no longer around. The companies are out of business, and and. Um, somewhat immune from prosecution because the corporations are now defunct. Please continue. And if you remember, we had uh, Chernobyl happen. Fortunately, that happened uh, after I left Germany. Uh, it still has uh, parts of Europe uh, dealing with radiation, and of course that went around the world too. Uh, at least they were able to get that one under control and uh, basically build a vault over it. Unfortunately, the same cannot be done with Fukushima, and it's still 
an ongoing event and the reactors are still releasing radiation <laughs> into the environment. And when we get back, we'll talk about what Germany calculated in 92. Okay, are we going to talk about fish in the Pacific Ocean as well? Yes. Okay. Okay, you're going to learn what's happening and uh, what to do about it. And we'll get back. That's Captain John Reagan's with us, and we're talking about uh, Fukushima. This is Fukushima 101. And uh, I've said it many times, and I'll say it again, that um, the day after Fukushima went off, I said that uh, Fukushima is uh, the worst man-made disaster since Noah's flood. That's what we're talking about this. I believe it is. And we're, we're going to share with you information about uh, the Pacific Ocean and... Uh, and contamination and so forth. Um, please continue, John Reagan. Okay, I'm still in the radiation this week, and it talks about how mm -hmm. in 1992, Germany calculated that uh, with the reactor meltdown, the strontium-90, uh, which is strontium, uh, looks like calcium to the body. The cesium that we talked about uh, last week looks more like potassium, which the muscles... Uh, take in, and the, it's about 75% of the cesium ends up in the muscles, which includes the heart. But the strontium-90 would uh, basically poison the environment for almost 110 years, 109.2 years, and then st <laughs> slowly decline over the next 273 years. Uh, won't do you very much good because uh, <laughs> um, you're, you're not going to make it uh, uh, nearly 400 years. Um, so that's uh, part of what we're looking at with this, and we'll uh, cover that more when we get to, to 103 on the radionuclides. Uh, oh, gee. <laughs> There's just so much that happened this past week. Uh, there was talk about uh, using the salt water in Fukushima, uh, how that made things worse, because now you've got corrosion caused by the salt water in addition to the uh, uh, the the I guess you say corrosion caused by the radiation, the breakdown of the material. So uh, you've now have got two factors uh, working against us for the plant. Uh, there's a, an article on how they're finding uh, higher radiation levels uh, and they're increasing uh, as they take new samples. And this includes the basically entire uh, United States West Coast from Alaska to California. Uh, most recent study uh, took 110 new cesium-134 samples, and they had an average of 11 becquerels per cubic meter of seawater. And this was 50% higher than other t samples taken so far. Um, so y you don't want to swim in the Pacific, and you don't want to eat fish if you can find them off the Pacific. Um, the um, see if I can get down to John. You've got yes. you've got this chart. It's on Veterans Today, and it talks about uh, uh, your radiation this week, number thirty-five. It talks about normal radiation is between 5 to 20 counts per minute. And it lists these cities, and I, I think it bears, uh, bears repeating which cities are over 1,000 uh, counts per minute. Um, well, just Fresno, California, 2,304 counts per minute. Spokane, Washington, 1,585. And I'm just going to read the ones over 1,000. So maybe it's in your neck of the woods class. Here we go. San Diego, California. Omaha, Nebraska. Raleigh, North Carolina. Miami, Florida. Little Rock, Arkansas. Bakersfield, California. Portland, Maine. Mason City, Iowa. Louisville, Kentucky. Denver, Colorado. 
Tucson, Arizona, Amarillo, Texas, Rapid City, South Dakota, Navajo Lake, New Mexico, Yuma, Arizona, Billings, Montana, Charleston, West Virginia, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Lincoln, Nebraska, Kansas City, Kansas, which is the same as Kansas City, Missouri, uh, Idaho Falls, Idaho, Harrisonburg, Virginia, Wichita, Kansas, San Bernardino City, <clears throat> El Paso, Texas, Hartford, Connecticut, Worcester, Massachusetts, St. George, Utah. Those are the cities that are over a thousand counts per minute. Just wanted to share that with you. It's everywhere. Well, that's, we've got. A, uh, that's uh, posted by Veterans Today, and that's on the financialstateoftheunion.com website news tab. Please continue, John. I'm down at Mox Makes It Worse. Uh, and this comes out of Japan, TEPCO, now saying that the <laughs> reactor with MOX fuel leaked directly from containment. Uh, it was due to failure of the vessel. And, of course, this is the reactor. The MOX fuel includes plutonium, which means that this is even worse than what the other three facilities there released. We've got another former official saying Fukushima is unstoppable, that we have huge amounts of radiation pouring out into the Pacific and from Pacific Ocean. Um, it's uh, and part of the problem is this is unprecedented. Um, yeah, and they even say we must invent new science for unprecedented catastrophe. Um, it's, um, and that's the problem. You know, they, they've hidden this for years, at least from the public. Obviously, the United States government knew. Uh, you can probably be sure that Russia and Japan knew. Uh, maybe behind the scenes, they're trying to come up with something, but uh, th th this is, uh, you know, about as bad a news as you can get that you have this huge amount of radiation and just spent fuel pool for released much cesium as all 800 above ground nuclear tests combined. And that was all done within <laughs> probably hours at most uh, a few days after the initial event. It's not under control. It's still ongoing. And it's out of the news. So people, you know, probably don't even think it's a factor anymore. I pulled another one. Uh, this was dated December 16th, but it goes back and talks about uh, if Unifor goes, bye-bye Japan and evacuate West Coast United States. And um, it, <laughs> along with the the next one, all spent fuel removed from reactor fuel pool number one, TEPCO says. Uh, <laughs> and I have the question of, you know, if 100% of this went up into the atmosphere, how can you re remove something that's already gone? The... the the theater of this is just so absurd. I am furious about how the government covered this up, didn't even give us an opportunity to do whatever we could to protect ourselves. And it's true there'd be, and perhaps one of the reasons they didn't tell us is that would have just totally crashed society. You're talking about over uh, 120 million people in Japan. You're talking about nearly uh, 40 million in California. When you add the uh, populations of Oregon and Washington, uh, you're up to 50 million people on the, the West Coast in those three states. 
And even if you wanted to evacuate those people, where would you evacuate them to? Uh, Even if you didn't have the underlying issues of the Muslims going into Europe, look how disruptive uh, just a few hundred thousand people entering areas that uh, uh, are adding to the the population. The, The infrastructure is not built to handle that. The logistics are not in place to support it. If um, they did evacuate the West Coast, think of the billions and probably trillions of dollars worth of real estate that, while technically it's, it's kind of like the, the solvency liquidity issue that we talked about, you know, if people knew the situation, the, the value of the real estate on the West Coast would probably be zero. Um, and while we're living in this theater and we've got these outrageous values, especially in California, imagine all of that going to zero and the effect on the financial system. It, it, John, we don't, we don't have to imagine it going to zero. I'll tell you why. Right near Three Mile Island, there is a nuclear meltdown there in Pennsylvania years ago. And there was a million dollar home that was available for purchase for $25,000. It was a million dollar property, magnificent property prior to it being irradiated. Nobody wanted it for 25000 So we know, we know what will happen to property values. I mean, who who's building a development near downwind from Chernobyl? Nobody. So the way we're... <laughs> We're between a rock and a hard place, and uh, the the last one on uh, this past week, uh, journalists, nobody even talks about Fukushima anymore. There's almost no more fish. The ocean is dying. It's terrifying. We'll talk about that more when we get back. John, let me just ask you very quickly in a few seconds of the segment remaining. Are you exaggerating at all? I'm probably not, I've restrained myself with what I've put on for posting. It's no exaggeration. Captain John Reagan's with us today, and I announced to our family last night that uh, this was probably the most important broadcast that I've ever been involved in. I am not exaggerating. This is 101 in the series tomorrow, hour number one. Hour number one will be 102 in the series on Fukushima, and hour number two will be 103. And that's for starters. Captain John Reagan, back to you. Yes, and um, I have not seen this reported on at all in the mainstream. And other than the pretty much the original link where the announcement of the declassification of the report, I have not seen a whole heck of a lot in the alternative media, media either. And when we're dealing with uh, what we were told back in 2011, given what we know now, it, it's very tough because our the way our brains work, whatever gets in there first tends to stick. And, and now we've got to go back and unstick that and start rolling that forward to, to see the lies and the effects, uh, things we had uh, conjectured about um, with what we know now, it gets to be more than just conjecture, um, especially this you know, fish dis- disappearing. And I'll, I'll add a link for tomorrow uh, for uh, Dana Durnford's website. Uh, if you want to go there ahead of time, um, you think my site's hard to type in with the Financial State of the Union. His is the nuclearproctologist.org. Uh, if you search for by his name Dana Durnford, D A N A D U R N F O R D, uh, you can find that he uh, basically went all along the, the West Coast in a very small boat, uh, risking his life, and he took pictures, and you, you can see the condition of the West Coast, and some of those pictures are just absolutely sickening. Um, and uh, nobody's been wanting to, to listen to him either. And, and 
uh, let me say, given what we know now, 100% of pool four, 50% of pool three, which was the MOX with plutonium, and 25% of pool two, all that spent fuel went up into the atmosphere within a matter of days, less than a week after the original event, March 11th, or, yep, March 11th, 2011, the report was dated March 18th, 2011, and they just bothered to tell us about it the last, well, probably about 10 days ago now. Um, what we uh, uh, definitely need to uh, focus on things like our health. Um, obviously, there's things that we can't undo, but there's things that can be done to mitigate, and uh, I'll leave it to uh, Doc C to take care of that. And you know, we're, we're getting ready to have a, a special weekend here, and you know, do the do the best to enjoy yourself because um, you may not have your family around to enjoy much longer. You know, the like I say, the radiation won't kill us right away, but it definitely shortens lifespans and causes ill health. The financial problems are accelerating, and uh, you know, if we have another normal Christmas. I'll be very thankful. Vincent. Wow. John, I've never heard you break down on the radio before. And uh, this, I, I told our family, this is as serious as it gets. It absolutely is. John Reagan and I are not exaggerating. I hope you'll be with us tomorrow for the two-hour special broadcast, Fukushima 102 and 103. I don't know why our fellow broadcasters are not broadcasting this. Do they not understand? Or have they been forced not to say anything? We're going to broadcast it, and we're going to tell you. And we're not eating tuna fish, nor anything from the ocean that we can help. Plus, above all, honesty and integrity, what happens next is... 